like any other medical student if you are thinking that learning upper segment and lower segment ratio is totally waste of time then you are wrong because learning upper segment and lower segment ratio is very important whenever we are having a child who is suffering from short stature for the evaluation of short stature we need to know and we are going to learn in this video do not skip anything watch till end let's start learning hi i am dr triya virani malde pediatrician and consultant neonatologist and i'll be your guide for pediatric subject if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and give like to this video because lot is going to happen on this channel for pediatrics before actual start starting let us pray to god to bless us all with wisdom and vision to shape our life i seek blessings from my all teachers anatomically if you see upper segment is from vertex <coughs> till the pubic symphysis while lower segment is starting of pubic symphysis till hill the second question is how to measure upper segment and lower segment to measure a lower segment first we need to take a measurement between starting from the pubic symphysis till the hill for this we need to ask a child to stand st still with the support of wall and then we have to palpate the pubic symphysis and then we need to check the alignment of buttocks as well as the hill and then we have to measure the lower segment part now after that we need to measure height for the measurement of the height we require a stadiometer and then we have to make sure that buttocks heels as well as the shoulder blades are in one plane and as well as there should be a maintenance of frankfurt plane also then we have to measure the height if you have not gone through the anthropometry lecture i suggest please to go through it because all the measurements anthropometry is very nicely explained in that lecture so please go through it the link is in the description box as well as there is i button so after measuring the upper uh, lower segment and the height now we have to apply the simple math we have to subtract the lower segment measurement from the height and we are having a upper segment value so now we have a upper segment as well as lower segment value then we have to put upper segment divided by the lower segment or it is upper to lower segment ratio so what is normal upper segment to lower segment ratio at newborn at the time of birth it is 1.7 is to 1 so at the time of birth the trunk is very bigger than the uh, legs and arms at 1 year which is called infantile ratio it will be around 1.5 is to 1 at 2 years it is 1.4 to 1 at 3 year it is 1.3 is to 1 at 7 it is 1 and by the 9 or 10 years it will reach the adult ratio that is 0.9 to 1 so for ease of remembering we need to remember that at birth it is 1.7 at 7 it is 1 and at 3 it is 1.3 so what is significance of the upper segment and lower segment ratio we have already discussed it is very important for the clinical evaluation of the short stature because we need to know whether it is disproportionate short stature or it is proportionate short stature so if you see this figure carefully and if you remember the table the upper segment remain always around 1 at any age but just have a imagination of the few condition in which there is a issue with the vertebral column like this then the upper part of the body will become small and in that condition what will happen to our ratio will have a lower upper segment to lower uh, segment ratio and what are those conditions those conditions are vertebral anomalies like scoliosis spondyloepiphyseal anomalies as well as mucopolysaccharidosis now mucopolysaccharidosis is a metabolic condition in which we have a issue with the lysosomal enzymes and metabolism of the glycosaminoglycans are disturbed so here also we'll have a lower upper segment to low, lower segment ratio now think of the other way around if the lower part of the body is very small in comparison to the upper part of the body then what will happen 
we will have a denominator which is very small then we uh, we will end up with the advanced upper segment to lower segment ratio and what are these condition in which we can have a issue with the lower limb first and foremost we have to remember achondroplasia now achondroplasia is a genetic condition autosomal dominantly derived and it has a issue with the fibrin and here there will be a formation of the long bones like legs and arms are more disturbed more or less the torso will be uh, torso will be relatively okay so it is also called short limb dwarfism here also will and have a advanced upper segment to lower segment ratio now the second condition we all know that rickets vitamin d deficiency will have a bowing of leg here the lower part will be abnormally smaller and will end up with the advanced upper segment to lower segment ratio third very important condition is endocrinal condition hypothyroidism if you know my first lecture in which we have discussed hormonal influence on the fetal growth there we have discussed that thyroid hormone is very important for the skeletal maturation here also the skeletal maturation as well as the linear growth is disturbed so we'll end up with the lower length of the limbs and this will also end up having a advanced upper segment to lower segment ratio so now trivia time Uh, particularly for this topic i have combined uh, answers also as well as questions because there were not much questions from this part of the growth so let us discuss now question number 1 upper segment to lower segment ratio in 3 years old child is options are a 1.2 b 1.3 c 1.4 or it is d 1.6 so i hope you will all be able to answer now the correct answer is b 1.3 and now we have to remember this at birth it is 1.7 at 7 it is 1 and at 3 it is 1.3 question number 2 ratio of upper and lower segment of the body reaches the adult proportion by your options are a 2 years b 4 years c 7 years or it is d 10 years do not get confused between c and d because at 7 it is 1 we need a adult ratio which is 0.9 is to 1 so which is achieved by the 9 to 10 years so correct answer is 10 years now question number 3 please pay attention over here this is bit tricky question number 3 is infantile proportion of the us uh, 2 ls ratio in adult is seen in which condition out of this four in which we ha will have infantile proportion of us 2 ls ratio options are a morocco's disease Morocco's disease is a type of MPS. B. Achondroplasia. C. Kyphoscoliosis. Or it is D. Malnutrition. Correct answer is option B. Achondroplasia. Now we will discuss how we have arrived on this answer. If you read the question carefully, it is saying infantile proportion. Infantile proportion means ratio is around 1.5 is to 1. now rest all three condition kyphoscoliosis will have a lower ratio mps will also have a lower ratio malnutrition if not having any other comorbid condition right rickets or anything as then only have a short stature which will not be uh, disproportionate so this is also out this is also out this is also out so correct answer is achondroplasia that conclude our upper segment to lower segment ratio it was very easy wasn't it yes it was very easy today we are going to end the lecture in a different way many a times i met ma many students who are in a field of uh, medical and those are always having some or other complaints in the form of that we are always running short of time we don't have a time of enjoyment we don't get time for recreations while the our other friends who are not in medical field they are having a good life with lots of enjoyment we are not going to comment or say anything about careers here we are just going to say something about attitude towards the life the general attitude is if you are going to enjoy today at the place of doing work then you are going to have a struggle tomorrow however if you do struggle today you are going to have a better tomorrow so it's in our hand we are falling in which category 
let us have a good hard work today hard core hard work today and let's have your success making noise for tomorrow i know it is very difficult to hang on sometimes the situation is not that good it is all good when i am talking to you but it is not good when you are actually facing but i have been to that situation many a times and believe me every night has a morning every darker side has a bright side so whatever you are facing now just hang on this time is also going to pass you are going to come out of flying with flying colors just hang on believe me everything will fall in its place in no time everything is in your mind so just be positive do lots of hard work study smart and study hard see you in the next next lecture till that time take care of yourself bye